Hello and welcome to the Thursday, November 7th, 2024 edition of the Santanet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Today's blog post comes from one of our sans.edu bachelor degree interns. Trevor Coleman writes about a search and activity against their honeypot from back in early August. The amazing part here is that one single IP address, one link, single source IP address was responsible for 62 million different attacks covering pretty much all major web application attacks. Of course, uh, these type of attacks are often used to build a botnet. It's a little bit interesting that all the attacks came from one single IP address, not from a botnet itself. There's no indication in this case that this attack was sort of more a research scan where someone is just enumerating vulnerable systems without actively exploiting them as well. And do you have an air fryer, maybe one that is controllable via a mobile app, which an organization that calls itself the UK's consumer champion did take a look at some of these apps and air fryers and well, what they found shouldn't really surprise anybody, but these devices tend to be rather chatty in the sense that they are exfiltrating data back to the manufacturer. In general, the recommendation here is to be careful if you're buying devices like this. Also, as you are setting them up, be careful what permissions you grant the related apps and what information you are entering as you are registering for an account. Overall, it's always a little bit questionable if an appliance like this doesn't work unless you set up an account. That usually also implies that if the manufacturer no longer supports the particular device, it may no longer work. And a report recently released by the UK's National Cyber Security Center outlines a threat that they are calling Pick Me a Goat. This particular threat is targeting perimeter security devices. One thing that sort of caught my eye here that it's yet another case where ICMP packets are being used for command and control. One of those things I see coming back every couple of years whenever people have sort of kind of forgotten about it, it is being reinvented. Another means for command and control here is also SSH with the malware hooking itself into the SSH daemon in order to then accept related connections. Pretty interesting malware and I recommend that you read the full report. Really can cover it here in the podcast. Also plenty of indicators of compromise and such that were published together with this report. And we got a proof of concept exploit for a recently patched Apple vulnerability in the managed configuration framework and the profile D daemon. The problem here is that if an attacker is able to send a malicious backup and this backup is restored, it can actually bypass some of the folder restrictions and then right into sandboxed and protected area. Interesting vulnerability, not sure how realistic the entire exploit chain here is, but yes, a proof of concept exploit is now available. And HP Enterprise released updates for its Aruba product line, fixing a number of different vulnerabilities. Some of them are authenticated, arbitrary remote command execution vulnerabilities, but there are also at least two unauthenticated command injection vulnerabilities in the command line service. So definitely make sure that you update in order to exploit the unauthenticated command injection vulnerabilities, an attacker would need to be able to connect via the PAPI protocol. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.